Is this the beginning of the end for Hollywood? Lost in a city of neon dreams, I stumbled upon a kindred spirit. Sometimes the best journey stem from losing yourself in the urban glow. This video was 100% made in LTX Studio simply by just providing one simple prompt. When I woke up in that desolate world, I had no idea where I was or how I got there. Standing before the radiant glow of the beacon, I knew that our journey was just the beginning and that together we could bring light to our fractured world. It automatically makes the storyboard, creates consistent characters, produces music, sound effects, soundtracks, and then renders the whole entire video. And as a reminder, it is still in beta. It's not perfect yet, so you're not gonna get a visual stunning masterpiece this soon in the game. But once you see the capabilities and what this thing can do, I think you're gonna get a glimpse into the future. And if you're a fan of AI, it's gonna be a very bright one. Okay, so here we are on LTX Studios homepage. And the first thing you'll notice, two things front and center, join the wait list and already have access, sign in. So if you don't have access to this quite yet, no worries, because many people are quickly discovering that when they join the wait list, they've actually have been getting access pretty quickly. Now with that said, if we head over to their Twitter, I mean X page. So let me show you something over here on their X page. You'll notice that people like this comment right here we are now giving access codes to our discord community members you have a pretty good shot of just joining the waitlist but option b is that if you join their discord server you'll actually get access much quicker it seems okay so quickly just look what ltx studio specifically says on the home page of their website control every aspect of your video using ai from ideation to final edits on one holistic platform so just watching this little quick video right here you could see okay. exactly Tell me about how this all works. Odo was standing by the window, staring at me in bed. Then, all of a sudden, he jumped out the window, and I ran over to see where he went. Wow, that sounds like a cartoon. All right, so you get it. I mean, that is pretty cool and pretty creative, the possibilities that this has at only the beginning phases. You know, showing some amazing looking movies like they have on their website is one thing, but what are the capabilities when we actually try this in real time? So now I'm over here in LTX Studio, and this is what you're gonna see. All you need to do is just give it an idea, let LTX do all the work. But the most powerful aspects and features of all of this are gonna be what you could do post creation. So what I mean by that is here is the first one I did earlier today, okay? I gave it one prompt and then just with one extremely simple prompt, I get this whole entire storyboard. This whole storyboard is about a 40 second video. But what's cool about that is I can go to my shot editor as well and I could edit each frame shot by shot with a plethora of different options. So if this seems complex, don't worry, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this. Now you can see you're introduced right away to three options that you could try. Shadows Whisper, Warbound, Forgotten Melody, and then you could see somewhat of the sample prompts, okay? So if I select the first one, look how short this prompt is. And to be honest with you, the ones I've been using have been extremely short. I've just been putting a young woman lost in a futuristic city, that's all I've been using. However, you can definitely take this thing to a whole new level when you do give it some very detailed prompts. So with that said, I'll go ahead and give you a quick example. Now I'm over here in my ChatGPT Mega Prompts database. Check the links in the description for this Mega Prompts database. And then at the very top, I'm in the specific category called content creation. Now the reason why I'm in here is because I already have a really amazing prompt that's called Storyteller. And if you haven't seen the video yet, here is the video right here. Make sure you definitely check this one out. But for now, let me just show you the awesome simplicity of LTX Studio. What I'm gonna do is up here in my prompt box, where it says type your film idea or full synopsis, I'm gonna start by just entering in a very simplistic prompt. Young woman lost in an otherworldly interstellar world. It really is that simple. Now, watch this. The next step, all you have to do is just now select next. Now, it really does work pretty fast. And then once it's done, it's gonna automatically provide you with a couple of really unique options. So the first thing you'll notice is we have two characters right here, okay? 
it gave it these pretty cool and unique names. If you like these two, go ahead and then stick with these characters. Up here in the top right hand corner, there's a plus button and it's called new character. If I select new character, I can come in here, give it a name, give it a description, clothing, and a voice. And in real time, it will create that specific character for me. I'll just say black, white, and blue futuristic spacesuit. And the voice, we're gonna change it up. We have all these options to choose from. Once I hit apply, you could see already on the right hand side, it generated her. There it is, Sarah Stella. Now I can come into each image, right? And I can actually do a face switch or a face swap. So for an example, this is amazing because if I wanted to swap out any of these characters' faces, I could do it by uploading a prior image. So for example, now I'm over here in my Leonardo AI Mega Prompts database. If I come down here and I find a specific image I like, let's just say this one for an example. I open it up, I can go through these images and say, man, I really like these images. In here, it tells me what specific presets and fine-tuned models. Let's just say, for an example, I want to use this as my face swap in LTX Studio. Simple. I'm going to go ahead and download this image. So what I'm going to do now is just drag my face photo here. And then the other thing you can do, which I actually just did, was over here on the top right-hand corner, there's actually an option to rewrite. So if you get a script like this or story overview or even some characters and you just want to start from scratch, click that. Instantly, it's going to regenerate and give you everything completely new. Okay, now check that out. Now there you have. You have two new characters. So let's just stick with this one for now just so we can keep things moving. So keeping this in mind, now that we have our third character, let's say we like her but something might be a little bit off. Now let's use this powerful feature called face switch and all you have to do is just select it and then this dialog box is going to appear. You can actually upload your own unique image, go to your downloads folder or where your image is, and you can see I'm simply clicking and dragging my image in here. As I let go, it's going to populate. It's going to reassign Sarah Stella to this face now. Select apply. Now watch this. It's starting to generate and it's thinking. And within about 15 seconds to 20 seconds max, we're gonna get our new Sarah. And then there she is, just like that, perfect. So we have our cinematic inspiration. I could put in other words, but for now, we're gonna leave it as is. But you can give it some more adjectives or a descriptive feature. But then one of my favorite parts is the visual aesthetic. Now, right now, it's on cinematic. But look at all these options that we have. And as I scroll down, we could start to look at what these will create for us. So if I select Cyberpunk now, okay, look, in real time, look, it's now making completely different new characters and putting them in a different sort of environment. However, notice my character's faces still remain the same because I already said I wanted them and Sarah Stella is still that person I have. Let's just do one more. Okay, Dystopian did a pretty good job. I like that. Now I have comic book selected and now look at that. Amazing comic book. Now I'm going to get an animated comic book style of movie. Amazing. Let's go ahead and now start this process. But quickly, before we do that, let me show you again how we can edit each individual character. If I select edit over here on Lila Smith, okay, look what pulls up. I can actually change her in real time, okay? Female, Caucasian, blue eyes, brunette hair, okay? I could change up anything I want, including her voice when she does talk. I'm going to put a futuristic jacket, comfortable pants. I'll change up to a skinny black black jeans, boots, we'll leave the same. Let's select apply and then look at the changes instantly that we're going to get with Lila or Leela Smith. Okay, look at that. That's pretty cool. I think I'll stick to this one. This did a pretty good job. We have all of our characters chosen. Let's select start. And now let's just watch this magic happen. Now, this doesn't take long at all. In fact, it's going to take maybe 30 seconds max. So as you can see, it's already starting the generation process and I could scroll down to look at all these scenes I'm getting. So it's looking like I'm getting a lot of scenes. It looks like I'm getting six scenes in total right off the bat, all with that one simple prompt. And I could tell you automatically right now, look how amazing that these already look. I like the way all my characters turned out. Now here is where the magic really starts to go. So this whole entire page right here, as I scroll down, this is what's called the storyboard. It's the whole thing all in one screen size. If I select shot editor, I can edit and change each scene or each shot 
shot by shot. So over here on the right hand side, check out all of this, okay? Let me go back to my first scene, first shot. Look at this right here. So there is my image on the right hand side. There's the seed. Here is the prompt that was used to create this. Now instantly, if I change up the prompt, I can get her in a completely different area environment, even changing up her clothing and her face, okay? I can scroll down, we have negative prompt. In addition to shot type, if I select shot type, look at all these options I have. Continuing going down, we have scene override. Here's the location. Again, I can change this up, location, lighting, and then even the weather. And then continuing to go down, my camera motion. Now this is pretty cool. And then at the very bottom, we're gonna have our sound effects. I could search for sound effects. Like if I type in dog, look at the bottom right hand corner, just by one simple search dog, look at all these options. Now that gets pretty tedious to do it shot by shot, but that's where up in the top left hand corner, you could do this as a project whole by selecting project settings. So in project settings, I can get a different cinematic inspiration by changing up some of the wording. My visual aesthetic is photographic. Remember earlier I showed you all those options. I can change that. Now in the soundtrack, okay, I have soundtrack selected. So you can see, you can actually preview the soundtrack and sound effects right here. But one of my most favorite things is that you can actually upload your own file and that will now be my studio soundtrack. But for now, I'm gonna leave it as is just so we can quickly see the sort of movie we're gonna get. Now, notice this, on the left-hand side, if you don't wanna edit each thing shot by shot, you could edit everything scene by scene. So for an example, right now, this location is an alien forest. Let's just change this up. I'm going to say blue hour dusk. Let's see what happens with that. Weather mild breeze. I'm going to change mild breeze up to a severe thunder and, uh, and lightning storm. We'll see what happens. Oh, look at this right here. On the right shot, especially, it did it 100% perfectly. Blue hour dusk, lightning coming down. I love it. Now, in each scene, under each shot, you can even adjust everything individually from each scene all the way down to each shot. Now, let's go ahead and now export this. Top right hand corner, let's select the button preview and export. Okay. And just like that, we have two options for now. We have quality standard, and then we have image sequence animatic. What that's going to do, it's going to have all of your images just be stills and then only produce a voiceover. No, we don't want that. Let's just do standard for now because we want to have a real legit movie. And as you could see in parentheses, we do have upscaling coming soon. For now, let's just select render. I never imagined I'd find myself lost in a world beyond the stars. It was like something out of a dream or maybe a nightmare. But then I met Zan, an alien unlike anything I'd ever seen. He became my guide, showing me the wonders and dangers of this interstellar realm. As we journeyed, I found myself torn between longing for home and embracing the unknown. Eventually, I made a choice to stay and explore this new frontier. But first, before we wrap this up, let me first show you something very important that's going to work wonders for you. So if I'm over here back in my shot editor or in my storyboard, okay, notice this scene right here, shot two and scene five, this isn't originally how it was. So what this was originally, this frog used to be a flower. Now here is what gets very impressive. I can come in here and on the right hand side, I now have many options. In the frame category, I have two options. I have text and image. If I have the image selected, I can actually click and drag any image in here and replace it with anything else of my own, which will then replace this whole entire image with my Leonardo AI one. Okay, that's one thing that we can do. Again, now if I select the text version, check this out, right below text, if I open up frame edit, I'm gonna have three options. Generative fill, remove options, and camera angle, okay? If I open up camera angle, I can come in here and adjust my camera panning, my camera angle, all by just clicking and dragging or scrolling. The other options I have are amazing. So what I did earlier was, if I have remove objects selected, let's just say I wanna remove my object, I could erase this frog just by painting over it, right? I have remove objects selected, look at this. Once I let go, instantly that frog disappears, 
like it never was there to begin with. Okay, I'll hit cancel. The other thing, now let's go back to generative fill. So like I said earlier, this used to be a flower. Now let's do it in reverse. I have generative fill selected. Now in the bottom left, make sure that you have your paintbrush selected, not the eraser. The eraser tool will remove your object. What we're doing is we're gonna replace this back with a flower. So paint over your whole entire image again. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and hover over this whole frog let go as soon as you let go we have this prompt box that now appears right below the image i'm now going to say a beautiful flower in the form of a, a tulip let's see if it knows what that is select generate it usually takes only 10 to 15 seconds that frog will go away and then we should have look at that a beautiful tulip and now let's replace it with a jumping fish and then there you have it perfect once you're done you could select done I'll hit cancel to keep our friendly frog right here but you could do this for each scene and or each shot let me know what you guys think but thank you so much for watching this video and please don't forget to hit that subscribe button because you'll be the first to know when all these videos come out but until then we'll see you next time